live on YouTube. I like to do it that way because then it records it on YouTube and um, it records it on YouTube. And then I don't have to take the recording and then put it on YouTube. Oh, yeah. It records it on YouTube and just a minute. It records it on YouTube and then I. Okay, had to turn off that sound. Um, Okay, now I'm going to take the URL from that and copy it. And uh, we need to get a picture on Zoom as soon as possible to put up there. We will share the screen and we will go to there, um, share. And oops, just a second here. Um, Let's see. Let me get some pictures here. Pictures. Okay, what did I do with those? Downloads. All right, here we are. Let's get, get this guy up here. This is Chester. Let's see, let me make sure. New share. Okay, there he is. So there's Chester and uh, he is five, five going on six. He was adopted two years ago. Um, I'm not sure which part of the country he came from. Maybe Nevada, Nevada or yeah, I think he came from Nevada. And so uh, this will be the second time I've trimmed him. And so I'm just gonna tell you about this horse and uh, we'll go through some pictures. I don't know if I can find the first pictures from when I trimmed him, but interesting feet. This, this horse probably has the best feet of any horse I have ever seen. And the thing about it is the reason he has these good feet is because his feet are anatomically correct. Somehow, some way, somewhere, he missed out on any kind of deformation at all. Now, uh, as far as I know, he was caught when he was two, adopted out when he was three, and his feet have missed uh, being incorrectly trimmed by a farrier. And uh, they also didn't get deformed or distorted when he was a young horse, because, you know, that can happen in the wild too. Um, you know, let, let's say, uh, I think a horse's feet on a drought year, a foal's feet on a drought year are going to develop differently than on a good year when it, there isn't as much drought. Because on a drought year, that foal gets up, he's instantly following his mother and it can get to the place where he just wears out too much foot, wears off too much heel. And his feet after that are never going to develop like they would have in the same way on a good year if they hadn't got all worn down. See, same thing as if, uh, uh, let's say it's way too good a year or uh, the, the foal is in an area that's total sod and soft and everything like that. You, you have two different situations that happen. You can trim the heels out of a horse and this causes hoof distortion, certain types of hoof distortion. But if you allow the foot to grow long and everything collapses, it can have the same effect on the internal foot because what you're doing is um, that hoof capsule either way is going to pull the back of the cartilage of that foot down and under and cause hoof distortion and when also it causes a difference in the horn tubules the angle of the horn tubules um, then that is going to uh, affect the sole and the frog depth and uh, all of that. So e even though they're they're almost opposites, they cause similar situations. All right. So um, 
this is why we can be better than nature because nature is an arbitrary shrew um, who has no feelings and no compassion and uh, everything's just the luck of the draw if you're an animal, you know? Um, whereas we being humans, having reason, being able to learn, um, if we use that knowledge, we can uh, control what nature does and make, make, uh, make things come to a better outcome than nature. Yeah, so see, I'm not into all this, oh, it's a natural stuff because nature is cruel, you know? So we can have feet on our horse that the horse was born with. Um, now, it would be better if we weren't in this situation where we've all trimmed the heels out of our horses because these stupid beliefs that they got to look like one specific type of wild horse foot. And, uh, and so uh, we're coming from the side of we've already screwed our horses feet up. Now we're trying to restore them. But in order to restore them, what I found out is you have to know what the true foot of the horse is. And so I did not come to know what it was until my horse's foot started changing and doing all these different things, like getting bigger. Um, you know, I went through this one uh, situation where I had been restoring his heels for over a year and uh, it was dry here. And uh, I was coming to the conclusion, hey, I want to soak his feet. I need to, his feet need moisture. So I went and I got these soaking boots and I went to put them on him and it wouldn't fit. The soaking boot would not fit him. See, his foot had gotten bigger. And I'm not talking about, we know that a horse's foot, if not trimmed, it gets bigger uh, in that it's not trimmed. But that wasn't what happened here. What happened here was the capsule itself enlarged and released the inner foot that had been bound. And so literally his capsule size and his foot expanded more to the size it truly was. So that when I went to use that soaking boot, I couldn't even budge it on his foot because um, I forget what kind of soaking boot it is, but they're the kind that they're not overly huge. You kind of buy them uh, close to the size your horse's foot is, and then you can put water in them and stuff like that. Okay, so, so this is Chester and uh, I have trimmed him twice. And so uh, we're going to take a look at his feet. Um, before we do that, I'm going to go up here and remind you of uh, that all wild horse feet are not the same. We're, in fact, I'm going to remind you of a couple of things before we go through his foot here. Um, so hold on here a second. Okay. Just a second. Oh, I always have trouble finding this one picture. I always want to find. I keep saying I'm going to label it something I can remember. And it, it's in my wild horse. Just a minute here. We'll do a new share. Um, okay, this is just pictures of wild horse feet that I have collected. Um, so I got this one that compares three different kinds of foot. Um, just a second here, if I can find it. Let me make these a little bigger view. Okay. Wild horse hooves. Well, let's just kind of go through some of these here. Let me find the one that everybody thinks is every horse is supposed to be. Okay. Did let me see here. New share. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is the one I was looking. Okay. So these are wild horse hoof examples. Okay. And I say up here, trimming the heels out of horses to mimic the wild horse foot in the center. This one causes multiple hoof diseases, laminitis, navicular canker, mystery lameness. Why is this foot the model? Well, why? Because some guy found a dead horse, took the feet off of it, and used it for the model. And uh, 
uh, didn't didn't know the true anatomy of the foot because mankind does not know until now. And so so look here, here's a wild horse foot. Now this foot was given to a furrier. I can't find him on the internet anymore. So I don't know if the guy died or what, but he had a, uh, he had a web page and it was a farrier and somebody gave him this foot. And it was just one foot. And of course the horse had been dead for a while and died. Oh, I, I would imagine if he was dead for a while, he had died, should, should mention that. Okay, so he had been dead, obviously, for a while to dry up and stuff like that. Now, he dissected it in that he cut the foot in half in which call, I don't know if I pronounce the right with the word right, sagittal. Does anybody know how to pronounce that word? Um, uh, anyway, that's where you cut it down the middle and look at the inside. Okay, like that. All right, so. Um, and this is another wild horse foot here. Now this horse was found dead in a cattle guard. I've talked about this horse before. Um, um, it was actually found by Pete Ramey, but I also need to put a disclaimer on there when I use his wild horse hoof pictures because he does not trim anything close to what you see in this picture. Um, he, he happens to have two models that I have used extensively and he does not trim like either one because he has been influenced by other people. And so, um, he, I, I just don't think, I don't know, you can, you can own something. It does not mean you know it. You understand what I'm saying? What me and my husband used to say that all the time, just because you own it don't mean you know it because we used to see this with ranchers we worked for a lot. They think that because they own it, they know it. And let me tell you what, that's why they hire people to take care of their livestock, okay? So uh, um, just because you own it, don't mean you know it or that you're even seeing it right. Now, so these are both, this is a wild horse that was found by him. There's another one, uh, We'll probably see it as I go along here that was found by him. But as you see, okay, these feet are totally different. Okay, now here's something I want you to notice though. Here's the, the foot with the heels that have been worn out over time. So this was probably a very old horse. Okay. Um, and you don't know, his feet could have got distorted and deformed in the heels when he was a foal. Could have got up, could have been a drought, could have been traveling 20 miles a day, just wore his feet down and they never, his heels never grew in right. So it could have been like this because this is not natural. Now it's really interesting. I mean, it's natural in that, yeah, if a horse has to travel too far, he's gonna wear his foot out. That's just the natural result because that's a natural law you understand but when we're talking about natural we're we're talking about um anatomically correct see we're not just we're talking about the what is the foot of the horse meant to be not what it became because of circumstances and environment necessarily um you know on one hand it could have, depending on the terrain and the weather and the moisture and the feed and the availability of water, how far the horse had to travel, things like that, the feet are going to wear different. You know, you don't necessarily want your horse to have feet from a wild horse that had to travel 25 miles a day just to get, well, they won't do it. They'll wait a couple of days and go get water. You know, but it, because there's no way they could do that. <laughs> so, well, I mean, they could, I suppose, if they had to, but they can go a, a day without water. So they're not necessarily going to go to the water hole every day. All right. Even though they might like to. So if a horse has to travel a long ways for water and has to take, you know, five steps, 10 steps for every little bite of food he gets, He's definitely going to wear his feet different than a horse who has um, <clears throat> pretty good food available.
And so, so here you see this horse. Now, what I want you to notice, here's the frog. I got the arrow there. And here's the soul. Okay. Um, look at this is, again, slice down the center. All right. Look, here's the frog stay. Clear up in the back of the foot here. Okay, now, even though this foot here and this foot here are a little bit different shape, the thing that they have in common is they both have heels. See there, this horse has none. Now, <clears throat> look here at the frog stay, clear up in the back of the foot there. And what's attached to the top of the frog stay right here is the digital cushion. See, this frog stay up between the bulbs keeps the digital cushion in place. And when the heels are worn out and the whole back of the foot is pulled down like this and the frog gets worn out to where it's not up high in the foot, <clears throat> well, it's attached, the frog cram that grows the frog is attached to the digital cushion is right on the other side of it there. So it pulls all this down and stretches and tears it. And uh, they think when they see this, they go, oh, wow, look how much that digital cushion has developed. The digital cushion is not developed. The frog in the frog stay has been stripped and worn out of the foot and it has just stretched and pulled the digital cushion down with it. See that? Um, so there are different things you can observe from this. Um, for one thing, uh, the thing when when you're dealing with hoof care professionals in the hoof care industry, this is how they see the foot right here, because this is what the x ray shows. You know, the x ray shows this view primarily. And so um, that's what they think of the inner foot. They think of the of the foot of the horse as this capsule with parts in it. And the only part they really, really, really look at is this bone formation here, which they call the bony column, where you've got your, your uh, uh, P1, P2, and P3, um, and then the navicular bone, or the coffin bone, the pedal bone, the distal phalanx. I mean, they got a million synonyms for everything. See? And that's why academia has a million synonyms for everything, medical terms, things like that. Um, and so one good thing you want to do when you're studying stuff is look up the synonyms of stuff, because then you can find all kinds of interesting stuff. All right. So, uh, um, OK, here again, you got. Uh, uh, What's the P stand for? <laughs> I've been sitting here. Standing. What does that P stand for? I forgot. Can it Phalange. Say? Okay, thanks. <laughs> I knew it was something like that. Okay, so that's why they call it P this, P that, and P the other thing. All right, so, but look, on this foot, look here. This foot, even though um, the capsule itself and the uh, tissues of the inner foot back here and everything were, were cut off and removed, the coffin bone was left on whole, which I, I think is really interesting because I want you to see something here. Let me uh, annotate. See, and, and here's another thing you can do when you're learning is that no matter how many times you've looked at something, you go back and look at it again. Because, it, because in the meantime, you have learned some other stuff so that then when you go back, you notice other stuff, other stuff, other things, uh, facts, whatever you want to call it. You notice other things about what you're learning. And so I always go back and revisit these pictures and look at different aspects of what's going on here. So, um, OK, now now something interesting here that I notice is, you know, when the heels are trimmed out and all this is pulled down here. Um, oh, I was going to go. Uh, 
well, I'm going to finish this here a little bit. And I was going to go um, uh, take the address from the YouTube and put it on the hoof group pages so people could uh, come and watch this if they weren't on the Zoom, but whatever. Um, they can watch it later. Um, OK, so here's your navicular bone, OK, right here. Okay, now notice you don't see it when you see this. See, this is the whole coffin bone. This is just half the coffin bone here and uh, what's above it there in that other picture. Um, so notice here how the digital cushion has been pulled down here. See that? And here's the thickness of the frog right here. Now notice the difference here. Here's the whole coffin bone. Uh, that navicular bone is in between here and here, up in behind here. Okay. Now, now look at here. Look at the frog. The thickness of the frog. See how that and the frog stay up between the bulbs. Okay. Now look where it's holding that digital cushion. Up under here right up under pushing it up it's like pressure loaded and it's fat see it's it's uh fat like whale blubber and so this frog which is meant to be like this what's it do it pushes this digital cushion up loading it up under this navicular bone so that it's you know the digital cushion but it seems to me, I mean, it seems to me like what it's really primarily cushioning is that navicular bone and this tendon right here, because it is all spring loaded up into here. And of course, it's in the bulbs in the side of the foot and stuff like, th like that as well. But, but do you see how that could have an effect if this is the natural foot, if this is the way the foot is supposed to be if it's supposed to have this big thick frog under here pushing this digital cushion up and holding it in place up behind the coffin bone here and up under the navicular bone and the deep digital flexor tendon that's right there too see then what happens when they no longer have this frog holding all this in place. See? So you see how it's very, very easy that depending on your heel configuration and what's going on here and with the frog and everything else, if it's not holding this up in place, how that can easily have an effect on your navicular bone. And so then if you, re let's say you restore the foot and on your tendons it flat does have an effect on the tendons all the way up okay but then let's say you restore this so that your your foot is unbound because see they look at it as parts but we know there's a foot in there right <clears throat> so so uh you restore the foot and a lot of times you get rid of what seem seem to be navicular problems why is that? Because all the anatomy is brought back to where it's supposed to be. So just a minute here. Um, yeah. OK. OK, let's look at this top picture here again. So you just notice different things. But look at these two feet here. Both have heels, both have a huge frog, lots of frog thickness and holding and compressing and pushing that digital cushion up where it's supposed to be, but not on this horse. And this is the model for the natural barefoot natural hoof trim right here. And that's why they're constantly taking the, the heels back to the base of the frog, constantly lowering the heels. They'll even, uh, some even prescribe a 30 degree hairline, say, um, 
there are people making plexiglass things and hold them up to the side of the foot to determine where to take their heels down to so that they could force this into a 30 degree hairline. Let's see here. So you'd have this is the hairline here. See the difference? Okay. Yeah, every every horse was no horse was meant to have this foot. Okay? This is the result of overwear. That's what that's the result of. And so we've been taught to mimic uh, the the bad attributes of mother nature. That's what we've been taught to do. Okay, let's see what else I got here just a minute. Um, all right. Um, again, you know, this foot does not look like that foot. Okay, here's the other wild foot. I told you, Pete Ramey has two examples, right? Okay, and I claim fair use on this video, by the way. Okay, fair use for criticism and education. Okay, so does this look like, does this look like the hoof they're trying to model all horses feet after by trimming the heels down to the base of the frog constantly or measuring? If I was to take this foot and measure from here to here where the periopal flap ends and then trim the foot like people teach, um, like Strasser, Okay, and ABC Hoof Care and many others. Okay, look at how much of the heel I would take off of that horse. See, the, this is what you're seeing right here is periopal flap. And from here to here is about one and one eighth inch. And this is what they teach people to lower the heels to right there. Now, this is a wild foot. This is the, um, this is the, the best kind of foot you're ever going to see. Look at the uniform sole thickness under that foot. I guarantee you that horse could go anywhere. See? He was walking on that. Now look here. Do you, is that just a bone in there? Like you see in an x-ray? Or would you cut the foot down the center like we looked in those other pictures? No. Look at, there's your horse's foot. And they all have the same foot with the same needs, with the same needs for heel. All The only difference is a little different size. And the thing that happens is, though, when the heels are trimmed out, it affects that inner foot and distorts and deforms the inner foot as well. And I think I showed pictures of that last last session but anyway so there's another example of a truly natural anatomically correct foot that the horse trimmed himself see people want to be natural well we better look for examples in nature that are correct see because again nature is an arbitrary shrew you know, she she has no kindness. You know, that's that's why um, you know, you see the lion eat the baby zebra. <laughs> Stuff like that. People go, "Well, it's just nature." Yeah, nature is cruel. You know, nature is cruel. That's why uh you have predators and and uh, you know, wolves eating deer alive and I mean stuff like that. You know, nature isn't always nice. Um, but we 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 should be above nature because we are human and people like well human beings <laughs> well you know what human beings can be absolutely wonderful you know just go to youtube look at all the people that save animals and do things that are kind for others and stuff like that it's not good humans that are the problem all right humans are good humans are good all right 
I guess that some are bad. All right. Let's see. Okay. So, um, okay. So the reason I'm going into all this with the wild horse foot is because I'm getting to ready to introduce you to Chester, who has anatomically perfect feet. And I trimmed him for the first time. Oh, let me look at my phone. Hold on. Let me get you another picture up here. Let me get you a picture. We're going to put Chester back up here. Where are you, Chester? There you are. He's such a sweetheart. Yep. There him is. Okay, so hold on. I need to look at my phone to see when I trimmed him the time before that last. Let's see here. gallery okay it might take a second because it was back there a ways is this it no maybe i get my my daughter to uh, 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 here he is okay i'm gonna get my daughter to come in here and send me these pictures um just a second Yeah, I don't. I would have to do them all one by one to where I think you can just go dap 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 and put them in there. All right. Yeah. Okay. When you're when you do, let me know. Let me know where to get them. Okay. I just posted to your oh, okay. And what was the date on those? November 19th. Okay. So the last time I trimmed this horse was November nineteenth of twenty twenty, and See, I, I in between, uh, well, uh, my friend here who owned the horse but has sold it to our other friend, his wife had passed away in the meantime, and uh, just a bunch of things happened there, and then you know, had some sickness and me not feeling good over here, and I mean, just odds and ends to where I just could not get over there to trim him, and so I was really like kind of stressed out because I thought, oh my goodness, he's gone so long now without a trim. Maybe we should have just let that farrier trim him and, and all this stuff. And I just thought, oh, his feet are going to be horrible. And the one reason I thought that is because I have two other horses that I trim that I've been trimming for 10 years and I was not able to get over there for like three months and, and their feet had just like, oh my goodness way grown out of bounds you know and so I was kind of distraught I was distraught I thought oh my goodness you know I, I should have got over there before now and this and that um uh but anyway so so the other morning Claude calls me because uh we had set up that I was gonna try and get over there and trim the horse and I was able to get over there and trim him and I was uh blatantly surprised because he had not been trimmed since November and you're looking at him now you're looking at this is his feet untrimmed and guess what he lives in he lives in uh let's say a fourth of an acre if that and of course Claude hadn't been riding him or nothing like that um so you can see he's kind of self-trimmed. Um, actually, he had been self-trimming the whole time, even in that small area. Now, had he gone any longer, or if he just, if a person just left him, his feet would distort. But I was flat amazed that they were not uh, really horrible or any worse than they were. 
In fact, he still has the best feet of any horse I have ever been around. So you figure November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, seven months. Oh, my goodness great, gracious. <laughs> I didn't realize that. So seven months, you know. Um, so anyway, so we're going to go through, well, we're going to take a look at the last picture because Claude would get him trimmed like every three or four months. Okay, I guess that's when that farrier came. Um, well, actually, I think Claude only has his horses. Yeah, his horse is done maybe every four months. Okay, and so he's had the horse for about two years. So I'd say the guy's done him probably maybe four or five times and just barely had to ever take anything off when he did him. And so before that, though, he was never trimmed because, again, this is a wild horse. He's adopted. All right. So let me go to Facebook here. And we'll look at, the, we're going to look at the pictures from before. Um, just a minute here. Um, and wait a minute, because I'm going to go to, uh, my YouTube channel and well, wait a minute. I think I have it. Let's see. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna post this just a second. Anatomically correct trim mentor page. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I got them them posted on our pages. Um, now I'm going to go to my page and we're going to look at the pictures of Chester um, from before, from the first time I trimmed him in November. Um, just a second here. Find, if I can find myself here. Okay, Lee, I can't find him. Just a second. Where would they be on my page? Let me go to your page to see if you can see. Okay, here they, here's my page. Just a minute. Let me post this here too. Okay. Oh, go ahead and look. Leah's got to find the pictures for me. Okay. They must still be loading. Um, I know. See, I've got them somewhere. I just don't know where they are, how to find them. So, just a second here. All right. So, if you're turning in here, we're looking. I'm looking for the pictures. When I last trimmed this wild horse, adopted wild horse who has the perfect feed. Um and we're going to look at some specimens here I got of his clippings. I've got his clippings. I was really working hard to try and get a whole clipping off. And uh, I was telling people, look, uh, you can even learn from your clippings. And you need to observe what you come back to. The growth that you come back to is as important, is as, important as what you leave. And it's going to tell you a lot. You need to learn to read that growth and understand it as well. Um, let's see here. Well, a second. I'm trying to think of uh, where I would have those pictures. So just a second. Let me find the pictures. Um, Oh, hey, wait a minute. I think I found him. Okay. Why aren't they on there? Why is his name on there? But if you don't find them. Oh, I found him. Oh, okay. Wait. I just sent them all to my sister. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is this is Chester. Um let's see here. And I'll go backwards. And this is from November, and here's his feet. So just a second. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so I knew when 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 I found out that Claude was going to sell this horse. Um, so then I found a, a member that would buy him, Sharon, uh, and she is going to be moving to Missouri, and so she's going to be living around here, and and uh, because you just don't find feet like what what we have on this horse here. And again, this is before the trim. Um, I'm going to want to take a look at this and compare it to uh, what his feet were like before. Oops, that's wrong. He's just super nice little horse. So I took some pictures of his feet before. Now, the thing I want you to notice here is the fullness of the digital cushion. You know, your digital cushion goes clear over into here. Your collateral cartilage is thin uh, right here. It just keeps the shape of the foot here and, and contains the digital cushion. Your digital cushion goes clear into here, up into here, clear over into here. Um, and you see his frog stay is high in the foot here, pushing up the digital cushion. You see how nice and plump that is in there. Uh, you'll see some horses where this is completely stripped out and it's like they, it's hollowed out right here. Oops, wrong way. So anyway, I was just taking pit. Now you can see he's pretty long here. This is about the same amount of hoof wall that I took off of him uh, in this last trim. Even though he had living in a small pen for about seven months, it, he self trims in the most interesting and amazing ways. Will you give her some water? Excuse me for a minute, right up there. Okay, I tarry. I gotta pet my dog, she's got a uh, heart disease. Okay, all right. I actually think um, that he had more heel this time that uh, the farrier that did him could have been taking off a little more heel than what uh, he should have been. Maybe not. I think he just has less frog. So see, he's self-trimming even on a small, small area. And plus, Claude was riding him a little more at that time. And you ride him on the gravel roads around here. Okay, here you see that that frog stake comes clear up into here between the bulbs. You see that? Just like what we saw on the wild horse, if we were to cut this foot down the center right here, you would see the same thing that we saw on these other pictures. Um, let me, just a second. Just a second here. Here, see that frog right there? See how it's up high between the bulbs here? And the bulbs are kept up off the ground. See, this, this, these are the bulbs on this horse down here, pulled clear down to the ground. See, no frog stay up between his bulbs right here. Instead, pulled down like that. But look on both these horses here. Okay, and that other horse where you see the, the foot right here, okay? This, this frog was clear up here, see? Would have been clear up in here, the frog stay. OK, 
Okay, so, uh, and why are we going through this? Because all these trims that they're teaching out there, they're basing on supposedly the wild horse. Okay, you got people over in the UK, though, saying, oh, well, our trim isn't based on that. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, all of them are basing these new trims on that. And then this falsehood has drifted over into farriery to where they're trimming the heck out of the heels of these horses, too. So this frog stay on this horse goes clear. The bulbs are independent of one another right here. And this frog stay goes clear up into the back of his foot here, high in the foot. Anyway, I'm going to go through this kind of fast here. Okay. I want to get to the after trim pictures. Well, I guess I don't have those on here. What happened to them? Just a second. Huh. Well, I didn't get to my after trim pictures on here. I did get some, but I don't know what I did with them. Just a minute. Nope, that's not, that's another horse. Okay, let's see. Well, I don't know what I did. Maybe I got them in, just a minute here. Yeah. Okay, Leah says she put them on our messenger. So just a minute here. Um, new share. Okay. We'll see here. Huh. Well, for some reason, I don't have uh, the pictures I took. I don't think after I after I trimmed him, or do I? Just a second. Just a second. Just a second. New share again. This would be from November. Um. Okay, so I uh, I guess I did kind of take after trim picture here where I hadn't rasped anything yet. Okay, yeah, I don't think, I, I guess I just didn't get a lot of good pictures that time. Okay, I trimmed him there. Okay, so anyway, this was the last trim. But now let's look at uh, the interesting uh, pictures uh, that came about from this time. So just a second here. Share. Of course, I got to find him. Oh, okay. I put him in here. Just a second. Uh, pictures, uh, downloads. What the heck? Okay. Just a second. Just a minute. Hmm. Just a second, I'm finding where I'm at here. Okay, who share? Hmm. Well, there we go. Okay, so there's Chester. Um, okay, okay. I had already, I had already started to take some uh, wall off here, and um, it was really interesting the way he was self trimming in layers. Um, you would think that it would all break off that way, but in the heels, the heels were 
curling in like this and breaking off right where they're supposed to be. And the toe was breaking off in layers here and being pushed back that way. It was really different. And something I want you to notice about his feet, look how thick the wall is and look how dark and black it is. Um, now this compares, um, see in our horse's feet, you have way more water line, right? But I think a lot of that is from, because of damage. Because in, in this horse, and in, an, in another wild horse, that one of Pete Ramey's, who again, disclaimer, he doesn't trim to produce a wild horse foot. He thinks he does, I'm sure, but I do not believe that he does. I can prove it in pictures and dissections and in his own pictures, how he trims. Um, look, this is just the facts, talking about uh, uh, people's methods of trimming. If you don't like that, well, you know, I don't really care. Okay, so look at the color of the wall there. Now, let me find um, just a minute here. Let me find a picture that shows you the inner wall of that horse. So you can see the difference. Like if you were to look at my horse's feet, okay. Uh, here, just a minute, um, new share. Okay, okay, do you see the thickness of the wall here? Okay, do you see the color of the wall and how wide the, what's called the water line, the, the uh, be the strata medium, or something like that, the inner layer, this is the most moist layer, soft layer of the foot. It's hard out here and it gets harder as it, or softer as it goes in. But on most domestic horses and especially horses that have had uh, hoof distortion, like my soles used to all be gray, okay? Like this horse, not this, this is my horse. And now because of hoof distortion and damage, it has ruined the pigmentation in the sole. I can take you back and show you where the whole sole was gray. Um, the walls used to be a lot blacker. Now there's a lot of white and brown in them from the damage that I did in trimming out the heels. So you see, the difference in this wall and this wall, see how black it is and hard all the way through. Even it, it, it doesn't have as much of what you call the water line as my horse's feet. And that's really interesting. And another horse that's like that is this one, just a second here. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm in the wrong spot. Just a minute. Take me a second to get this. Um, -dum 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 -dum. Okay. Uh, who share? And again, this is another horse. Here's the thing. This horse here, this wild horse we look at here, was three years old. It was a three-year-old when she got herself into a cattle guard and killed herself. Okay? Look at the wall. Look at the black all the way through. Hardly any waterline white at all. You see what I'm saying? So on in this horse's life, these horn tubules were never out of place and the heels were never overworn. And so the way the foot developed, the way the wall grew did not affect the pigmentation in the wall or um, the way it did in my horse. And uh, again, this guy here, you see there? Cause remember the history on this horse, 
He was wild till he was two, caught, adopted at three, he's been with my friend for two years. Okay? Okay. Okay, again, look at how full he is back here. Now, I think that because he wasn't trimmed for a while that it did pull some of this down under his foot right here. I don't like the way I see this frog stay moving down under. Down under is good only if you're in Australia. <laughs> okay. It's not good if you're a frog, frog stay. You don't want to get pulled down under. Okay. Um, now, so I had cut off, I had trimmed off that much of the foot. And then I thought, man, I got to get some pictures of this because it was just so interesting. Now, I don't even think in November I trimmed his back feet at all, if I remember right. Not much anyway. Um, and uh, look, look here, there, for going that long, there wasn't that much to trim. See there? I mean, that's kind of amazing. And the way it was wearing off, the way it was self-trimming was uh, very unusual. See, you can see it back here. Look at that toe. See? See how uh, the layers of the hoof are curling back? Isn't that interesting? See, and you know, I've told you about the Mustang roll. The Mustang roll is where the horn tubules actually grow and curve in and under. You know, so this just is, uh, hmm, interesting to say the least. You know, and it's not, you know, at first I thought, okay, well, his toe got long and it's uh, laminar serum out of the white line because that happens to domestic horses. That ain't what's going on here. This is the inner, inner layer of the hoof wall that has curled back like this and is self-trimming off in the toe. Uh, fascinating. Like I said, what you come back to is as important as what you left. Now, his frogs also were interesting in that they were trimming, they were they were, there was no thrush at all. This has been the wettest year we've had in a long time. There was no thrush at all. And his frogs are self trimming in layers. Yeah, so that's when I, I started taking pictures, you know. He got such a nice eye, doesn't he? He just really sweet. Okay, so. Here's what he did that, okay? He trimmed his toe like that. He was trimming his toe like that. Okay, but it was getting time for a trim in that he was getting growth ring bulges right here. That Why did they get that? Because when they're not trimmed and the, the wall is weighted, the hoof wall compresses. It compresses to try and help and save the horse from hoof distortion. So the hoof wall compresses and gets very, very dense. <coughs> and it's trying to compress in here before it gets shoved up into the coronary band. And so when it finally gets a ring is when uh, it compresses enough to where it makes a bulge, you know, like just a kind of loopy little bulge there. This is all a way to self-level, um, to help the horse when he's not being trimmed up, to keep from having hoof distortion. Oh, this is that foot. Interesting. Horse in self trim. And uh, here's another thing. Okay, so, so a certain Barefoot magazine did a certain article um, several years ago on the heel buttress. That the heel buttress is supposed to be a big, huge thing, you know, that goes like this. Well, I noticed 
that my horses healed buttresses as I was uh, trimming him, as I was restoring his heels, really started to get different and be more like this. You see how the wall there is just like that? That they weren't like these humongous things and that as you trim these heels at a slant to trim the heels out, it makes the buttress wall here look big. But when the foot is correct, they don't look, they don't quite look quite like that. Let's see. Um, just a second here. They aren't huge, huge, but they can look like this. Just a minute, I'll show you. And uh, these probably don't look like this now. I'd have to find some newer pictures. Just a second, I'll see it. Let me find my newer pictures. Um, see, what are we doing here? We're trying to find what is the true foot of the horse because how can we develop this in our horses if we don't know it? And uh, again, why are we doing this? Because mankind has not known the true foot of the horse because when a horse is shod, when he's trimmed, and even in the wild, they can develop a, a type of foot that is not what it's supposed to be. And so we can get used to looking at deformed as the norm. And so then we think since that seems to be the norm, that's what it's supposed to be. But that's not what it's supposed to be. And this is what Bracey Clark found out, who was uh, is a very well-known and renowned vet and farrier in the UK uh, with the Royal Veterinary College. And uh, among farrier circles on the ones that are have some education, you know, they'll drop his name. Um, he noticed this and I talked about this uh, last time how um, he noticed this just a minute. Ah, boy, the flies are getting bad. I hate those little sticky flies that always want to buzz in your ear and stick to your face. And but and so you go to smack them and and then they're gone by that time. So you're just, you know, hitting yourself, whacking yourself. I had one yesterday that uh, just a minute, I got to find this thing. I'm Bracey Clark. I had one yesterday come and he buzzed in my ear. I smacked that ear just as he left to go buzz in the other ear and I smacked that ear. So I'm just sitting there hitting myself. Okay, um, where are you there, Bracey? PQR, cause I wanna read this to you again. Okay, okay, so this is from the early 1800s. Hey, they had plenty of horses to study. They lived on horses. Everything they did was with horses. So they knew something. It doesn't matter if it was in the 1800s. Uh, in much regards, they're way more educated and smarter than we are. Um, all right. So anyway, he wrote that this is a book he wrote on uh, on the hoof of the horse and shoeing and anatomy and stuff he learned and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so he says, he's talking about um, the natural foot. Uh, so he had a horse uh, that he was able to keep for five years without it being trimmed, okay? And so he assumed that then this foot on this horse was the natural foot. Meaning, when he says the natural foot, he means anatomically correct, okay? And so he says, uh, I'm going to kind of come into the middle of the story here. Um, he says, I am able, and as this foot has attained the fifth year of its growth, without the least restraint from artificial measures, so it will be a fairer example to reason from. Do you, do you understand that? Then, then at present, can anywhere be found? So he had a horse he kept for five years out in the English countryside somewhere or something that they never trimmed that, uh, I, well, I don't think they trimmed it. Irregardless, to him, it was a natural foot. Now, recently, 
somebody posted an article that I wanted to keep on that because it showed uh, his drawing of this foot along with the foot that had been shod for a certain amount of time and then another foot shod for another amount of time. And the foot that he drew was in fact deformed. <laughs> see, see, it doesn't matter if the horse was just allowed to live out there on, you know, on sod or whatever, that doesn't guarantee that that horse's foot is going to grow in a way that's going to be anatomically correct because, because you don't know what happened when the horse was a you know, foal either. You know, so I, I will try and find this picture, these pictures and post it out of his book. Okay, so he says, um, let's see. Oh, he says, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. It says, uh, so he felt that this would be a fair example to reason from. What are we doing here as we look at these feet? We are looking at them and reasoning. See, this is why man is able to rise above the shrewish aspects of cruel nature and conform nature to her best self. See, that, that's the object of what we're supposed to do as guardians and keepers of everything on this planet. We're supposed to better it. We're supposed to make it better. We're supposed to keep it in line. Um, we're guardians and protectors is what we're supposed to be. Okay, so if we're going to take a horse out of its out of an environment where it can have the perfect environment to perfectly wear its feet to a perfect level, then we should know what the true foot is and how to maintain it for the horse because now that becomes our job. Okay, because the horse is gonna do a job for us. So we need to know how to take care and give him the best feet possible because no foot, no horse, bottom line. All right, so Bracey Clark <laughs> says, um, so he, he has this example of this one horse and it's the only one he's ever had, okay? Why is that? Because uh, people just didn't raise horses to not do something with them back then. They weren't pasture pets back then, okay? So to be able to get a horse and let it do that, first of all, take some expense, you know. So he was able to do that. He says, uh, let me read that again. You need to hear it again. You need to hear it over and over and over and over until you understand it because that is what a student does. That is what a disciple does. We are disciples of the hoof of the horse. Okay. And so we study the foot. And we can also study what other people have found to a degree. And here is why. He's going to explain why we only do this to a degree. Because people can be wrong. All right. So he says, um, he says, I am able, so he kept his horse, and as this foot has attained the fifth year of its growth without the least restraint from artificial measures, so it will be a fairer example to reason from than at present can, be, can anywhere be found. He could not find a truly natural foot. This is the only one he ever found. Okay. Uh, that's saying a lot since how many horses do you think there were around? <laughs> you know, lots. And so, uh, but here's the thing. He never saw an American wild horse. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, um, Let's see. And we had them here how long before somebody thought, of, hey, maybe I ought to take a look at that. Duh. OK, so he says, uh, let's see, where I'm at here. Fair example to be found. 
Okay, it says for the operation of the iron upon the natural foot is vastly more rapid than anyone not having investigated this matter would believe. In other words, he's saying they shoe these horses really young uh, and and we just, none of us really realized how young uh, they start putting shoes on these horses. That's what he's saying. He says, but of which we shall presently afford demonstrative proof. So he's, he's going to demonstrate the proof of how quickly they put these uh, shoes on horses and stuff. So, and he says, and it is from such shod feet. So he never saw a natural foot except for the one horse. And so he's now saying it is from all these shod feet that hitherto, up to this point in time, ideas and reasonings on these matters have been formed. So all ideas and reasonings on the foot of the horse had been formed from men looking at feet who had been trimmed and shod for some period of time. Hence, no one had ever seen a natural foot, meaning a foot that had never been trimmed or shod. And Bracy assumed that a natural foot, one that had never been trimmed or shod, is the way the foot is supposed to be, hence anatomically correct. Okay, but he was wrong. Okay, and for those of you that have been in this for a while, now when I find that picture, has, any, has anybody seen that? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody had posted a post uh, where they showed part of his book where he drew the picture. I don't have that right now, I don't think. Um, but when I saw it, I went, well, that foot's deformed. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> oh, I, I'm snorting. Okay. So he says, it is from such shod feet that hitherto ideas and reasonings on these matters have been formed. What matters? On how to, how to take care of horses' feet so they're sound. And he says, right here, it being naturally apprehended, meaning it being naturally assumed on these, uh, that as soon as the shoe was off the foot, and I've seen people that believe it this way too. Uh, people assume that as soon as the shoe is off the foot, the foot was in again a state of nature. See, meaning, well, uh, what it, my foot, have you ever heard people say, well, my horse is barefoot? But we know that barefoot means more than just taking the shoes off your horse, right? You know, barefoot is, is supposed to be where you get to your horse to a state where he's a gravel cruncher, where he can go on any terrain without boots, um, where he is 100% sound and just like the wild horse feet. That is the natural barefoot horse. That's where it comes from. So, so the people that studied the feet just assumed as soon as you took the shoe off, there, there he is, he's in his natural state. Okay. And um, so they assumed he's once again in the state of nature. And Bracey goes on to say, that is if it had sound, if it, that is if it had a sound and tolerable appearance to the eye and you took the shoes off, it was once again in its natural state. However, right here he says it, for the eye also soon gets used to deformity. Well, now you take that foot I just showed you a while ago that is the the poster child for barefoot trimming with the heels all worn out of it. Okay, that's what people are used to looking at. And you're going to trim your horse's foot in a large part, especially when you don't know the anatomy and stuff like that. And sometimes even if you do, if you're not careful, you're going to trim it into whatever has been put in your mind as the ideal. See? So he says, for the eye soon gets used to deformity and 
does not discover it. Okay, so I can show you barefoot magazines that got horses who have had the heels totally trimmed out of them. Um, that that say, uh, once you go bare, you'll never go back. You know, the ideal foot. I can show you all kinds of pictures where people are saying that's the ideal foot. But I just showed you three examples and how that foot does not have any thickness of frog does not have any thickness of sole. See? So if you don't want your horse to have any frog and you don't want your horse to have any sole, really, you can just trim the heels out. It's going to compress the foot and bend it and give it a false concavity that you've been told your horse is supposed to have. And chances are, if you do things just right, it's gonna cut off all the circulation and deaden the nerves and your horse is uh, gonna seem sound. But in the end, it's going to tear his tendons. It's going to give him arthritis. It's going to give him other issues. Hence, why all of a sudden we went from, from uh, horses with bad feet and shoes to horses that are barefoot um, that need every kind of help under the sun to stay sound see went from just taking trimming classes to you got to have a whole body class now see all right so so it says the eye also soon gets used to deformity and does not discover it now listen to this because this is what we're dealing with in ourselves and in all the experts in the hoof care industry all of them, from the vets to the farriers, to all the researchers, to all the companies that make supplements and hoof paste and shoes, everything, all of them, every single one of them. He says, this error it was. What error? What error or is he talking about? error on his checkbook that caused him to bounce all his checks. Uh, you know what? When you make a wrong calculation, you pay a penalty for it, don't you? When you reason something out, add up what you think are facts and come to a conclusion, if your conclusion is wrong, you're going to suffer a penalty for it, aren't you? Error is not good okay we want truth we want to be correct we want to be right we want to understand and know for sure and so what is the error he's talking about he says this error it was that embarrassed and misled me in all my first experiments what error is that? That he looked at deformed feet and thought that was natural. Not natural, true. Okay? He didn't know they were deformed. The eye soon gets used to deformity and he doesn't even know it's deformed. See? We see that in the whole hoof care industry and in ourselves. See, if you don't know anything and then you're taught by an expert to think about it a certain way, you get that information in you and, and they can put uh, a deformed image in your head and then you're going to think it's right. And that's what happened to him. And he realized it. He came to realize it. So he said, this error, it was that embarrassed and misled me in all my first experiments. Why would that embarrass you? It embarrasses you because, uh, you know, these people are, uh, these are experiments. You go, you share this with other people, right? Oh, and then you find out you were wrong. So the error misled him 
into false reasoning, into seeing a distortion as being what the foot was supposed to be. And so what happens if uh, you, you wind up drawing conclusions that are false and you're going to pay a penalty because this is anatomy. What if this is your heart doctor? You know, uh, this stuff happens all the time in medicine. And because when you make an error or you receive a tradition, which is an error that gets passed on from one generation to the other, embarrasses and misleads you. Well, my goodness, we can't have people knowing that this happened, right? They don't want to admit it. But this guy, this guy, he's fabulous. He saw it and he admitted it because he was interested in finding out the truth. See? So he says, this error that I was looking at deformed feet, thinking that's the way the foot's supposed to be. It was that embarrassed and misled me in all my first experiments on what I conceived to be the natural foot, which was not, okay? And, you know, he came to some great conclusions and things like that, but when I find that foot and show it to you, you will see it was deformed. It was still deformed, okay? <laughs> He's still, see, it's the back of that foot. It's that cartilage and that digital cushion and the fact that the horse has an inner foot that has misled and deceived people all along, okay? The only reason that we can come to a knowledge of it now, pictures, 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 and which are, what would you call it? Facts, okay? You look at enough pictures, you start to see patterns. See, that's what science is all about, seeing patterns. Okay, so he says, this error it was that embarrassed and misled me in all of my first experiments on what I conceived to be the natural foot during several years and completely obscured my views of the true nature of things. Okay, don't we want to know the true nature of things? See, that's why I'm doing this deal today, because that's what we're going to look at. That's what we're going to look at in this wonderful specimen we have of Chester. Okay, he has perfect feet. I mean, there might be a little bit of, of uh, hoof distortion now going on because he didn't get trimmed, which I'm going to correct. Okay. Because um, he did a good job self-trimming, but it still looked to me like the frog stay got pulled down and under a bit. We don't want that. That's what we are trying to bring back up in all our horses. Okay, so he says, so I'm going to read this again. This error it was that embarrassed and misled me in all my first experiments on what I conceived to be the natural foot during several years and completely obscured my views as to the true nature of these things. That's great that he could admit that. That's awesome. And if he could see Chester's feet today and hear the things that we are talking about, I'm telling you what, this guy's heart would be thrilled and elated. But I'm going to tell you something. There's other people whose hearts would not be thrilled and elated. And why is that? Because their reasonings are incorrect. All right. They reasoned on a foot that had worn its heels out and then everybody followed blindly along. Okay. And so what's that? That's embarrassing and it's misleading. And especially when you've made a lot of money off of that so-called reasoning, you may not want to give it up, you know, just saying. Okay, not for sure, but there's people ain't going to give that up for nothing, all right? Especially in the farrier world, they have traditions that I mean, it's pull, like you've heard the term, it's like pulling teeth. Okay, 
So he says it had not only obscured his views as to the true foot of the horse. We're going to we're going to put that there. For true nature, the true foot of the horse. Um, I have a series of videos on my channel called the true foot of the horse. And uh, the foot I was using was deformed. <laughs> and so the very same thing was happening to me that he's talking about here. Except now it doesn't embarrass me anymore. See, because now when you're wrong, that means you're one step closer to being right. See? Okay, so he says that this had not only obscured his view to the true nature of these things. What's this say next? And my predecessors what's your predecessor i have predecessors see every field has predecessors predecessors however you want to call it that's the people that came before you that did all the research and the study and wrote the books and made up the laws that govern the subject matter and the field of endeavor you are into see you if i'm in the medical field and that and there's there's knowledge that came before me those are my predecessors right okay um so that's what he's saying yeah i mean if you read george fleming's book you find that people have been writing on this stuff for centuries upon centuries and so he'd read everything he could get his hands on, going clear back to Xenophon, okay, which has some interesting things to say about the frog, by the way, and how the frog, a good horse, Xenophon said, is one who had the, high fro the frog high up in the foot, meaning he's talking about the frog stay way up back between the bulbs. And a, a horse that is not good to choose is one that had the frog low in the foot, meaning he'd worn his heels out or his heels had gotten long and collapsed forward, which in both cases pulls the bulbs down and under the foot and strips that frog out from between the bulbs. And um, so he says, OK, so we're going to read this again. This error it was that embarrassed and misled me in all my first experiments on what I conceived to be the natural foot during several years and completely obscured my views as to the true foot of the horse on these things. And my predecessors also, as the general tenor of their works will indicate. Now he wants to quickly get out of this subject and go on. He says, uh, quitting, however, these remarks, we proceed to an examination of the actual state of the frog and the natural foot, the true foot of the horse. Well, he thought he had it, but he didn't. OK, and so if I had his pictures here before me, um, I could explain and show that to you. But anyway, um, he really goes into great detail on the frog, though, and uh, 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 he made a lot of, of wonderful discoveries and did a lot of wonderful research. But again, he never saw a truly, naturally, anatomically correct foot. See? Um, okay, so now that I have elaborately gone over this, just a second here. New share. Um, pictures. Uh, da, da, da. Hold on, I got to look at something else. Okay, so he wrote that in around uh, 1820 or so, I guess. Now here, I'm not going to read that right now, but I find it interesting that he does quite an elaborate uh, description of, just a minute, 
da, 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 da. here's his writing. He does quite an elaborate description of the what he calls the frog stay. Okay. Um, just so you know. Da, da, da. Um, let me see here. I might have copied the picture of that foot and put it in here and then maybe not. Let's see. Oh, well, somebody, uh, just a minute, somebody uh, put this in a meme, which I thought was pretty cool. Looky here. Here we go. See, somebody put this in a meme, which is pretty cool. Uh, the eye soon gets used, soon, soon gets accustomed to deformity and then does not perceive it. Bracey Clark, 1800s vet, veterinary author. See, pretty cool. All right, so what we're looking at today is a horse that uh, might be a, a tad of deformation that happened in the frog, a little teeny bit, easily, quickly fixed. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at that foot. I'm going to uh stop going here just a second maybe 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 baby dun, 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 dun. bracy clark bracy clark let me see up here i'm just trying to see if i got that picture somewhere no um recently uh, if you go to Fran Jugra's hoof blog, see, uh, she put an article on there about how recently they found in a box, they were cleaning up the Royal Veterinary College storerooms or something, and in a box uh, that actually had a little lock on it, they found a cardboard hoof capsule that Bracey Clark had made, and this is it. Very interesting. See right here, you got right there, the frog stay. Okay, but his, this is still uh, his, I don't know if I have the right pictures of it here. Just a minute. Um, I want to show a side view of this foot. Because you'll see at the side view that this foot was still um, not quite correct. So, oh, just a second here. Okay. Things are not working out for me. There we go. I guess I don't, oh, there we go. Here's a side view. See there, it was all put together. You could take these pins out and take the whole thing apart. It was very, very, very neat. Okay, but this would show me immediately that the bulbs of this horse are still down on the ground and that is not where they're supposed to be. Uh, the angle of the hairline, everything shows me that Bracey's foot was still distorted unfortunately, because he never had the opportunity to study the wild horses, see? Um, and of course, uh, it's disgusting, I think, that we have a whole industry uh, based on them grabbing one foot and basically designing their trims out of all that one foot with its heels worn out, see? That you would think, see, we all just assumed that they had really, that they really knew the anatomy and, and stuff when they did. All right. So anyway, enough of that. I'll be like him. Okay. We're going to leave those comments da, 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 and move on. Uh, let's see. Okay. So let's go look at um, the recent pictures. We'll see. New share. Okay. All right, so we're going to look at what they look like 
uh, before I trimmed him. See that he had gone seven months and this is the only growth that was there and that the rest had worn away. And you can see he's peeling off and trimming from the inside out, which I find very interesting, kind of from the outside in and the inside out, the way his feet were trimming, the way his heels were trimming so that they didn't get overly long. It was really interesting. So anyway, I so I trimmed that foot up and then I thought, well, I'm going to take some measurements, you know, so so there's about an inch. So right here is an inch and a half. And you, you see the inch and a half comes. I did not map his foot before I trimmed it. I just trimmed it to where everything went. And so uh, then I wanted to check out the mapping. OK, and so an inch and a half right to the white line here. Say from the true apex of the frog to the white line, an inch and a half. Now, why do we use that? Because this is what I see on all these internal feet. OK. And the thing about it is, if the hoof capsules disformed, the internal foot will wind up being, can wind up being deformed as well. OK. Yeah, my black mark is right here. And I'm just showing you how big the foot is here. So, and you know, he hasn't got big, thick, heavy bars or anything like that. His bars trim down. He self trims his bars really well. He self trims his heels really well. And they stay. He doesn't, you know. Nice thick of work. Here's the heels from the hairline. See, there's two inches right there. So his heels, when trimmed, are at about one and three quarter inches. Um, I do feel that the hoof capsule kind of moved forward a little bit. And now you look at this big bulge here. Remember what I was telling you about these, these comp I call them compression rings. Because when the foot does not is not perfectly self trim and keeping the capsule totally uh, in weight bearing equilibrium and unity and the everything lined up, then because it's dovetailed, the wall pushes up and compresses. And what it's trying to do, it's trying to compress here because it doesn't want to push up into the coronary band and push that up if at all possible. That's the last area. Usually what will happen is it'll get all compressed and condensed and you'll get several of these rings like this because you can feel those. This, you know, you have your growth rings and that can be smooth. That's just the, the, uh, uh, that's, that's just your sections of growth as they're coming down. See, the growth rings go around like this. OK, but when there's too much weight on the wall, you get a compression ring in the growth ring. And that is where this will turn into a little bulge here because the wall is compressing together. And so the horse is trying to self level. He's trying to protect his feet by doing that um, so that the, the wall doesn't flare, OK? Because once the wall starts to flare and pull out, um, that's when uh, you're going to you, that's when you start to have real problems. And so what happens is the wall will push up, push up. It'll get these. And then uh, finally, finally, when all that's said and done, it will start to pull away down here and you get the flare. And then the more flare you get, the more hoof distortion you have and leverage leverage see leverage is an enemy now i want you to look at his cartilage back here that's the true cartilage of the horse not these cartilages that go like this 
See there, is that not beautiful? Look at that. That is just gorgeous. Because see, you got to remember um, where I'm at here. Annotate. Where's the foot? Ah. See, and of course, this is not the foot. This is a shell. This is a fingernail. Your fingernail ain't your fingernail, but it is part of your fingernail, but it protects the end of your finger, right? Same thing with the hoof capsule. Okay, this part here is literally part of his foot right here. Okay, but then you got this. This here would be the horse's real foot. There's your foot of your horse. This is just the capsule that grows from the foot. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. Um, okay, so there's your foot. This is just your foot nail. <laughs> okay, okay, and then that frog, that frog, uh, let me do a different color here. We'll do it in green. The frog, in between the frog state, grows between these bulbs to keep them separated and to keep them elevated and to keep the the frog is part of the hoof capsule. It's not part of the foot. The frog is meant to support the foot, okay? To support the back of the foot and to, it grows up here between the bulbs like so, say, There's your, there's your frog right there. Um, okay, so anyway, this cartilage is so beautiful. And what happens when you trim the heels out? It takes this cartilage and pulls it down. Look, I want you to imagine your horse standing there without his hoof capsules on and no blood, just nice pink feet, pink little feet, okay? That's what his little pink feet look like. Just a minute. Uh, I just wanted to undo one there. His little pink foot here. And now uh, you're, you're gonna put a shoe on it. He, well, okay, here's the rest of him. Okay, his leg and his whole body going clear up in here. And this is his foot. His feet wanna stand the way his feet wanna stand. Just a minute. <laughs> And so if you take the heels out and force his foot down like that, his whole body wants his foot to be up standing the way it's supposed to. You're not shaving them, do Oh. I'm not? Just a minute. Am I now? No, I can just see a foot with, with drawings on it, but I don't see any anything else. Oh, just a second. That's, uh, I'm coughing. That's all I was sharing was a foot with drawings on it. Is it? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's okay. I was uh, driving, I just got home now. I thought I'd <laughs> I was listening all the time. <laughs> that, that's okay, because you never know. All right? So I need to be reminded. Okay, so what I'm trying to uh, say here is 
I just want you to picture this is your horse's foot, not this capsule. But this capsule supports and protects that foot. And so this capsule has to grow and be conformed to the foot, not the foot to the capsule. When we trim the heels out, we start to deform and conform the foot to the capsule instead of the capsule being growing from and fitting the foot correctly. Okay, so <clears throat> let me get out of here for a second. Okay, so, so we're going to look at the back of his foot now. I mean, he's just got such a tremendous digital cushion in here. Um, and here's his frog stay. It is starting to be pulled down just a hair right there, but not very much. See, start looking at this. <clears throat> here's his bulb right here. That uh, that's all the thicker your bulbs are supposed to be. It's just the skin that covers up the back of the foot right here, the periopal skin. It's not supposed to be this wide. Now, his frog, and and probably periopal, but we're talking that there's a difference between periopal that might grow on the heel and frog that might be stuck to the end of the heel here and all filling up that gap. There's a difference between that and when the heels are trimmed out and this periopal skin stretches to cover up the area where you have trimmed out the heels. Um, uh, I have examples of that. So this periopal skin is really not supposed to be any wider than this right here. Of course, you got to, again, you got to learn to tell the difference between when the frog has grown thick and filling this up here. Anyway. Now, again, his heels are at about one and three fourths inch and he's got full live sole in here. Okay, so here's back foot. <clears throat> Let me turn that around. And so when I cleaned up his frogs, <clears throat> they had no thrush at all. And if you look at them, they grow in layers. See the layers? One, two, three, in layers. Everything on this foot grows in layers. The sole grows in layers. <clears throat> like the earth, they, they talk, in fact, that's what they call the wall, um, the stratum. Uh, they got the stratum, ex, the stratum periopal, the stratum externum, the stratum medium, the stratum internum, and the stratum lamella. And, and when you're studying geography and stuff like that, they call the different layers of the earth the stratums different layers and so then you get to the frog here and you've got stratums you know you've got different layers when you uh get into this soul you'll find it grows in layers you know and i know this from having soaked these feet these hoof capsules in water and then you see them start to separate So, now see, here's his frog stay. Pretty good, but this is kind of coming down here a little bit and on a really, really, really good wild horse foot. Um, so, this frog is being pulled forward a little bit. Okay, um, so I'm going to keep working on that to make sure that comes back and fills in correctly back here. It's not that bad yet though. So anyway, so I was just fascinated by how long it had been since I trimmed him and how much wall was there to trim. <laughs> not much, you know. Not much considering. And just the way it was, um, well, if you look at it, see how it's it's breaking off from the inside 
it was trimming away as well as the outside. See? Interesting, don't you think? Like I say, what you come back to is as important as what you left. And it's going to show you uh, it's going to show you a lot about how is the horse wearing his foot. You know, chances are like here, <clears throat> like you notice this like more foot here. Chances are that I probably trimmed more out of this side. Or wait, no, this is a back foot. So I did actually myself did not trim that foot, I don't think. I might have rasped down the edges some, I don't know. But anyway, if you come back and your growth is higher on one side than the other, and then you trim your horse and you take pictures, you might notice that you have a tendency to leave one side higher than the other. Now, what this, see, is going to make a difference because when the horse breaks over, if his foot grows faster, not faster, but it's going to grow out more um, in a different way on that side and be higher and so he won't be able to break over right in the center of his foot maybe or something like that so that's something you should always keep an eye on again look at the cartilage on this horse's foot this is the way the cartilage on these horses is supposed to be Let me see here where I'm at. Maybe I went the wrong way. Oh, well. This is interesting. Just a minute. Okay. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, just a second here. Okay, I think we already looked at that. Maybe now I can't remember what I did and what I didn't, but I know this was on a front foot, and I just thought that was really interesting the way that the wall itself was uh, delayering, delaminating. And, and the way he was self-trimming was interesting to me. Okay, so this is before trim. I don't think I showed that picture. My pictures are all messed up here. Here's the back foot. Again, you see how high the frog is in the foot there. See, the frog stay up in the foot. So that if we were to slice this foot down the center, you would see it like you see it on those other wild horses we looked at, where you saw the frog stay up high in the back of the foot. Uh, which way am I going here? Yeah, see that frog stay? Heels. <clears throat> Here, I thought I'd take one of those. You know, that's not how we look at feet, though. All right. That's not how we take pictures of feet. But there's something interesting about this picture. Look at how huge his cartilages are. Okay, you don't see this cartilage pulled down into here. You know, see, the back of that horse's foot is massive. Lots of foundation there for that horse to fall on. <clears throat> yeah, so he's an inch long there. But still, for, for not having been trimmed for so long, the way his feet kept their shape, uh, to me, that was just really amazing. 
there's where I just, I just, uh, I had cut that part off. And I just thought that, I thought, I even thought that was interesting. See, every horse I do, I learn something from. And again, look at how the wall's black all the way through. This little bay horse, you know. <clears throat> See all that nice even growth. And again, um, just interesting the way self trim, trims just fascinating there's your layers of your frog and then when i trim that off there he's got no thrush or nothing and he probably would have worn that off uh perfectly <clears throat> but see the layers But again, I want you to see how this is being pulled this way from him not being trimmed enough. It was starting to pull the frog forward and under the foot. We don't want that. <clears throat> There's another back foot. Okay, well, that's it on there. <clears throat> okay, but anyway, you just see how massive his back foot is. Um, this is from the moment he got up and jumped up as a foal. He was moving and keeping those feet trimmed perfectly. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's see, what else do I want to share about that horse? Okay, here we go. These other pictures, just a second. Um, where am I at? Mm. Hold on a second. Let's see. Okay, I got to go to Facebook. Facebook. Facebook, Facebook. Get these other pictures. I just uh, downloaded to myself. Um, Okay, let's see, Pause. New, new share. Okay, this is off my messenger. Um, <coughs> oops, it's my prescription for my bronchitis. <laughs> Okay, just a second here. These were, ah, darn it. Okay, these are the pictures I took of, I, okay, so like I took the clippings and I put, washed them and I put them in water because I just, I just wanted to examine how he had self-trimmed and the length and not only this side like this is the side you would look at if you were looking at the hoof okay um but let's see see that was the length so he had about an inch of growth which is too much 
but still for an inch of growth and for his feet to stay in such good shape i thought that was uh for that long i thought that was pretty good thank you okay but this is a part i wanted to look at too again uh where you can see the stratum you know the layers in here and how black the feet are with very little water line. Um, the more water line you have, the softer the feet will be because the water line, I think, I could be wrong, don't take me on that, don't take me to church on that one. But anyway, um, just I just thought it was interesting. And look how thick his walls are, almost an inch thick. I'm going to uh, save that image. Just a minute here. And I'm going to share it and magnify it. Yeah, just I just thought that was really interesting. So anyways, anyways, okay, so so um, that's really all I had to share on uh, that situation with that horse. But you see, we are looking at the true natural foot on that horse. We're looking at a foot that Bracey Clark, I, I'm just telling you, he would have been thrilled to be able to come over here and go look at the wild horses and study the feet and maybe go to some of these ranches like I was blessed to be around there in Wyoming. Uh, where very similar uh, uh, Riza, basically the same as uh, that place that you go. Where yeah, those yeah. Are. So the, um, they basically live wild out there. Yes, yes. And uh, I mean, go, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying that they haven't been trimmed for the last, now it's about three, three months now, uh -huh. I think. Let me see. No, no, sorry, I'm talking nonsense. Um, no, no, it's only, it's, only, it's only almost two months. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, uh, they haven't been touched since then. They, they're just living out there wild, living their best life, uh, grazing. And uh, basically, the only thing that's provided is water, basically. Everything else is just wild for them. Yeah, see how great is that? And um, so, and the thing about it is they would have much more movement than this horse, you know? Oh yeah, the, 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 the paddocks are huge. I mean, I mean, you gotta look for, that, for, for them. You can't find them in there. And then eventually you drive for a couple of <laughs> minutes, you'll probably see them. So they, mm -hmm. they, the, the paddocks are huge. When do you think you'll go out there again? Do you know? Have an idea? Um, the only son is going out the end of June, July, I suppose. And uh -huh. um, he hasn't asked me if I want to come with, but I'm sure he will. <laughs> but I suppose it will probably be probably probably going out in August again. That's what I'm okay. thinking. Yeah. Well, great. Well, I hope you get an opportunity to take some pictures. Yeah, I think I'm going to organize myself better with, with taking pictures and stuff next time when I go out there. Now. Because you trim, you trim so much, and you trim so many horses. I mean, what are your opinions of these feet and of the amount of growth? I mean, the amount of growth and the way the horse was wearing the growth. I mean, from November till a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's quite amazing because look, although he's self trimmed, he's still got long. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, so he, although he's self trimmed, he's still got long. But I mean, uh, his feet, feet basically kept, kept a good shape and yeah. uh, didn't flare too much. Um, and that's also something that I've noticed with a lot of horses that's got thick walls. I mean, not just thick walls in the toe, but thick walls all around. It's very difficult for their feet to really distort much because they, the, because of the wall being so thick. I mean, I, I suppose uh, the, 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 the hard wall, the, 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 the pigmented wall is so thick. It actually just keeps that foot in that position to to stay stay correct you know uh-huh yeah so, so so it's just difficult to, i mean it's like i mean i've noticed a lot of uh like like racehorses and uh, for instance their feet their, their walls are much thinner 
I mean, mm-hmm. all the way around. It's not not just a, a general thing. I mean, what I'm trying to say is their feet distort quickly, and sometimes you can can correct them quickly again. So it's one of those things that that that, huh. that happened, you yeah. know, which is quite funny. Um, and and the horses that I've struggled with with bad distortions with thick walls, they struggle to come, you know, to come back. The feet struggle to come back because I think the wall is so thick and it's so so hardy that uh, it basically locks its feet in that position. So if you've got a horse with correct feet with strength of wall like, like this one's got, it's difficult for them to really just uh, uh, collapse and and, and, and and distort, you know. Mm-hmm. That will take longer for the scissors feet to distort than it would be a horse with thinner walls. Yeah. Or, or the walls. Yeah, I see what you mean. And then, uh, like, what do you think of like the pigmentation and and how how black the walls are and yeah, how they that's, don't that's, have that that's water what, line? That is what, what what's quite striking because I mean uh, the pigmentation of these horses. I mean, this horse's hooves is much wider than the pigmentation layer on on the most horses that I've seen because. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, I suppose it's, it's, it's a stronger hoof. It's a it's a, it's a more um, if I can call it for that. It's got a, a, a thicker shell, if you can call it that, a capsule mm-hmm. shell. So to contain everything uh, correctly, basically. Yeah, I, I thought it was really neat, interesting, and I thought it was interesting the way his foot was uh, breaking off in inside the ring. And bending yeah, back I've, and the layers. I've yeah, I've seen a couple of horses do that as well. I mean, I mean, there's a horse, there's a couple of horses I haven't done in like I must have been the last I've done them was December month. And uh-huh. uh, I mean, uh, I think I'll probably see I've done a couple, but there's a few new ones that, that I haven't seen. So I'll probably be going the this my hopefully this week still. And then I'll have to take a couple of pictures because I see some of them have done what this one has done like where, where, the, where the hooves are long and it actually layered off and it curled under the foot instead of flaring up, up and away from the foot huh see that's pretty neat you know yeah um so I, i'll take pictures from, uh, from those hooves if I, if I see them and there's a couple of others that i've seen that is actually grown because <laughs> the feet was fairly fairly decent and when they grew they grew very long i mean i took off like if it's uh, might might uh, I stand correctly, but it's an, an inch and a half, if not more, uh-huh. of the feet, and the feet basically be, it just looked like it was like 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 tube feet, but it's not tube feet because it's not like contracted at all. It's mm-hmm. all the foot is all uh, basically aligned, and 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 the size it should be, and uh, and but it just grew long. It didn't, grew long it didn't, and didn't mm-hmm. yeah. It was too long and down, you know, it didn't distort any any to the sides or anything. And when I clipped off like an inch and a half, the feet was basically just correct again, mm. which was quite funny. Now, see, <laughs> these, that, that happened to horses, my mare many yeah. years ago. Um, we brought her from Wyoming where she'd been out uh, for a year just running in a huge acreage with some other horses. And then we brought her here and uh, we just moved here and I was always worried about trying to feed her and stuff because we're kind of, you know, and just starting out again. And this was like 20 some years ago. But anyway, so uh, my Schwann man, Schwann's is a company that they have food and they go around and they sell it and stuff. And it's refrigerated and you could, they come to your door and you can buy it. And so my Schwan man, he, uh, his wife raised barrel horses. And so they had this um, stallion that, that was a grandson of an all-American futurity winner. And so um, uh, we did a full sharing agreement with the Smear. Well, so this is different country. It's sod. It's not like Wyoming out yeah, there. Yeah. And so she was over there for a year. And I assumed don't assume stuff i assumed they would have her feet trimmed yeah. well they didn't and so when the cult was born i went over there which that's valor my horse now um yeah. anyway i went over there and her feet had grown just like what you're saying they had not flared forward or anywhere they'd just gone straight up yeah, yeah. you know 
Uh, only she had so like funny. a good two inches. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the weirdest looking thing. And I was like, you know, so anyway, I got a fairy to come and trim her, but it was from the sod and she had good feet originally, you know, and then yeah. they just grew straight up like that. So I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> and yeah, it is, it's weird. Yeah, and it looks weird when they stand up like that and think, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Like they're on stilts or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. once you swim, then you realize, oh no, we've got the right foot. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. Big Lick ain't got nothing on you. <laughs> so, um, so when when you go, also, would you check it out and check out the pigmentation on those horses? Yes, I will. I will. I will take note of that because I haven't, you know, I have taken note of, of, of white line size and stuff like that, but I haven't really checked. Uh, the, the the water line size really I haven't really paid much attention to that maybe I should and I'll have a look at it and I'll take yeah. some pictures and see if I can if, there, if there's any difference in in horses that's more domesticated than those ones mm -hmm. yeah yeah see it'll be interesting because I I well you know I have a theory that it has something to do with uh, when the foot gets compromised that it uh, destroys the pigmentation. Yeah, I and think what, what you see what I, this is my theory. This is just something that I, I come up with, with but listening to what, what you were saying and things that I've seen and stuff like that and putting two and two together. And uh -huh. uh, this is what I've, I, I've, I've seen is um, horses with, 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 with distortions. I mean, sometimes the foot is not, uh, how can I say, what is actually happening is when the foot distorts, the capsule distorts. And the softer white white line, I'm sorry, the softer um, inner inner layer um, doesn't is actually attached to your 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 inner foot, if you can think of it that way, because your harder part is not really. Um, uh, 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 if you look at the, the inside of a, of a foot and you look at the, the little um, uh, uh, laminar leaves that inter, yeah. inter interlinks with your with your with your with your sensitive lamina. So if you look at that. Um, there's no pigmentation in that. Yeah. So your so that is all the white uh, uh, water line, if you can call it that. So mm -hmm. after that, you've got you've got uh, the, 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 the the pigmentation layer, which is harder, which keeps everything together. Yeah. So I think what sometimes happens is when the the hoof, hoof capsule starts distorting, and the, the the inner foot still wants to stay where it should be connected and, and 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 aligned with your with your with your with your with your capsule as such the actual um uh uh, uh water line kind of thickens up to kind uh -huh. of uh, to kind of basically give a little bit more elasticity for the inner foot to stay more correct while the actual capsule the hard wall kind of distorts a little bit more if it makes any sense yes it does so, so that that's why your 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 inner uh, or like the the waterline kind of gets thicker and wider, uh, trying to basically balance out your your inner foot trying to stay in its place and the yeah. uh, capsule foam moving away from it. So it's like it's almost like your white line getting wider when you yeah. you're getting a flow. But 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 it, I think it, it happens at the level of the the the, the waterline first, and when that waterline can't. Just, uh, stretch anymore can't give anymore the, I think then the white line starts stretching to to, to, to accommodate that that whole mm -hmm. stretching uh, process so it's just something that I've um, I mean Nick it's just well, things that I think about when I see things yeah. like that yeah it's like the periopal you know how the periopal yeah. gets all weird and it gets yeah. it winds up growing in a different spot and so it's adding more than it normally would yeah, so, and basically trying trying to keep the hoof together yeah. by giving it more depth as such, but but yeah. not actually giving it depth, but trying to keep it together. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. I wouldn't be surprised at all. You know, just seeing how different things grow and and how when the it, well everything's growing from that inner foot, and so so when things yeah. get shifted, they're not going to grow like they would have. Exactly, and yet exactly. the foot, like we've seen, the foot does everything to try and hold itself together. Exactly.
you know. so I think that in a in a in a stratum, what happens is it starts to basically it, it thickens up to allow for the distortion of the capsule, but trying to keep the inner foot still in its correct place. Yeah, so that's why when you restore the capsule and the hard wall and everything, uh, it starts it basically starts shrinking again. I think it should. I mean, as as the, the foot starts getting more correct in, in its place. I think your, your your inner stratum should get smaller or, or, or narrower in that way. Yeah, and what you said too about thoroughbreds having really thin walls, they've also a lot of times got very platter feet. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And um and like my horse, um, let me put that up here again. Uh where is he? Yeah, I got too many windows open, so hold on here just a second. Oops. Um, my horse, just a second, I got to close some windows, just a second, might take me a second here, you get too many windows open, then you open a window to try and share and you can't get it. Cause it won't, it won't let you. Okay. Here I am. Here I am. Okay. Okay. So the wall, the, his walls like here were real thin in the quarters, but look, he's getting it. Since the foot is going back to normal, his walls it's are getting thicker, out. you know? Yeah. Because I think all those horn tubules are starting to, to basically level out and instead of punching up in one area, making it wide, it's now moving back and uh, basically thickening up your wall all around. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, um, yeah, exactly. Um, let me find out here. That's non beveled. And see, he's really got um, almost a three and a half inch wall here. Long. Yeah. So his sole is very thick because the internal foot is, is it about two and a half inches actually okay that kind of looks weird like that but see the sole yeah. there um hey linda it's tiffany i have a question okay so i'm out here in washington with um taking some horse body work class and my classmates are watching the zoom with me Oh, great. Yes, yeah, so we're spreading the word. I'm going to try it. Hey, I'm hello. Trying. So, you girls, say it. hi. Hello. Hi. So um, I'm just wondering if you can just show slower some of those pictures again of, of like the white line and the length of the bulbs and, and the cartilage and the periopal. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we just on a quick lunch break. Okay. Good on, the, good, good on, on the wild horse that we just did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, because this is my domestic horse that I'm trying to restore um, his feet. Now, if you remember on the wild horse, I was saying because he didn't get trimmed, it started to pull his bulbs down this way. So when these heels are trimmed out, um, it takes all this anatomy in the back of the foot and it pulls it under the foot in here. And then it grows from there and holds it there. And so uh, you'll you'll look at this and you'll see it curving under that way because this is actually supposed to be perfectly straight along here it's not supposed to go under like that so then this is from two years ago on my horse's foot that i'm restoring um uh but this other horse uh we're gonna look at his cartilages and stuff here so let me find him again Okay, where'd you go? <laughs> Just a second. Pictures. Hold on, I got to close out some windows here. Zoom won't let you. Won't let you. Just keep every a million windows open. I want to make sure I don't... Uh, close something real important here and quit recording so hold on okay just a second here um dum -dum -dum. okay 
screen share. Well, what is going on? Just a second here. Close that one. Okay, I think I finally got it here. Just a second here. Okay, I think I got it. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so so I think this is before I trimmed him. So we're just I'll just start going through them. Just a minute. Wrong way. Okay, so what I want you to see here is the cartilage on this horse's foot right here. That's what you're wanting to look at, right? And then the thickness of the walls and, and look at the periopal now. Now the periopal band uh, corium, the periopal corium that grows the periopal band, which is this layer of skin right here. And then it's also back here, it's this layer of skin that covers up um, the back of the coronary band, which is right here. Coronary band should be straight all the way back to here. Horn tubules should grow down at a specific angle like this, which is due just perfectly. Um, and so when you tr over trim the heels and set the back of the foot down, it also sets the angle of these horn tubules shoving forward. So they will start to grow forward. Let me explain something here. Just a minute. So they will start to, they're supposed to be like this. When you cut the heels off, it puts them at an angle like this, which begins forcing them forward to grow forward instead of growing here and growing down and having weight equal, weight bearing equilibrium with the body of the horse and the inner foot and stuff like that. And so since they're like this, eventually what you'll see when you do a hoof evaluation and you get a good picture of the side of the foot, instead of the horn tubules being in alignment like this, and you can see them there, the little hairs, that's horn tubules. See, instead of being in alignment like this, all the way back into here, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this horn tubule here will have grown and it is right here. And then this one right here will have grown and it's up here. And so it, what happens is since this area of hoof wall must start growing here, grows down to right here where it meets up with a specific piece of sole. And then those two get infused together and then they grow down to the ground like that. So when your horn tubule that's supposed to be here from over trimming the heel is forced into here, it disconnects from the piece of sole that it was supposed to join up with. And so there's nothing there to support this wall. That's why um, one of the reasons why you seem to see separation in the quarters of horses a lot. Because the horn tubules, because the heels have not been trimmed right, are not in alignment here. They have grown forward like this. And so one of the things we do as you're growing the heel and raising the back of the foot, you are able to uh, affect the walls here. Let me get a different color. You are able to uh, bevel the wall, the outer tubules of the wall, like so. Like if you didn't bevel it, it goes clear to there. If you do a bevel, what it does is it gives it room to move because it wants the whole time this is going on, the foot is under great pressure to want to move back to where it belongs. And so when we bevel these feet, what happens is when you bevel this wall in correction, this is hoof capsule correction, it will make this horn tubule want to fall back like that. And so uh, what we find is that we will bevel the wall and then come out a couple days later and it's like, where'd the bevel go? You know, it's like the foot grew, but the foot didn't actually grow. It was this excess 
wall that was forced in right here, when you beveled it, it gave it release so that it could go like that and fall down and back. And so what we'll do is then we'll bevel it again. And that gives it room to release to fall down and back. And you keep up this process as you are also growing these heels back in back here. So that eventually <clears throat> this horn tubule that got shoved clear up here can come back and be right where it's supposed to be. So that then once again, this piece of hoof wall growing down here can join up with the sole it was meant to, to join up with and grow to the ground together. And that's when you get thick uniform sole and heel and everything else that supports the internal foot, which is the real foot of the horse. And that's that foot that affects the whole body and leg and navicular bone and tendons and up into the back and the whole shebang. And so it's just like if you get online and you research human feet, footwear is really important. Having correct footwear, um, your feet can, can uh, affect the whole rest of your body. Uh, inflammation, the whole, it, it can affect your emotional state as well. So that we see the same thing that happens on the horse here. So, okay, so I'm going to uh, clear these drawings and uh, move on. Okay, let's see, am I going the right direction? Okay, these are just I, um, the pieces of hoof I took off on this trim that I was studying. Okay. So this just a kind of preliminary. One thing I want you to notice is how, what a good white line he's got. Um, it's a little dirty, stretched, uh, just a tad, tad tiny right in there. But really, he's got a really good tight white line, very good thick sole, uniform sole all around the foot. Um, let's see here. Here is the periopal. Um, this is as wide as it should be. It's only about as wide as my thumb or my finger. Um, it will grow and it will attach to the heels here. And then here's your frog. And so you've got a lot of times what you'll have is you'll have your frog and periopal stick together and fill in this gap here and stick to the heels. And, uh, Periopal skin and frog can look a lot alike. And you also have periopal skin that covers up the very back of the frog here. And so um, as you see here, this turns in like that. Ultimately, it's not supposed to be that way because uh, this horse also, as good a feet as he has, doesn't get trimmed quite right on time, even, even before I just trimmed in the last two times. Um, it will gradually uh, pull the frog coriums and frog kind of under the foot here. Um, so what we really want is we want this frog stay real high in the back of the foot and supporting the foot and really a straight hairline across the back of here. And I could show you, I'm not going to do that today, but I could show you on my horse how this stuff, as I started trimming the frog and correcting the foot, and getting everything back into alignment, the whole frog moved back. And uh, the frog stay totally widened up between the bulbs for more support, a totally more healthy frog and everything. But again, this is a wild horse that was adopted. Uh, I trimmed him the last time in November and then life situations happened for them. Life situations happened for me and I couldn't get back to him till just the other day. So it was really amazing um, how he, even in the small area that he lives in, he had pretty much self-trimmed quite a bit and his feet had maintained their shape. But again, because now I know um, more about what the true foot of the horse is, I know that this 
um, needs to be corrected. He needs a little help. He needs some help here. All in all, though, his feet is out, her, his feet are awesome. The development of his digital cushion is uh, amazing. See, if you were to feel this and palpate this from this to this, you take your fingers in there, see, put your thumb here and your finger there and feel that and squeeze it. You're, you're going to feel the frog stay. You're going to feel the digital cushion all in here. Okay, and again, you can see where, um, how thick the periopal skin is here. When you trim the heels out, the periopal skin will stretch to cover up the area. Um, kind of hard to explain, but kind of what happens is you trim the heel out, it pulls this foot down. The foot don't want to be down, it's cartilage and fat. It's being forced down. And so it will stretch back up. And when it does, it's since the periopal skin is right here, if I cut the heels out to here, that foot is not going to want to be down like that. And so even though it's down in back, this part of the foot is going to want to stretch back up to where it's supposed to be. And so since I've cut the heel to here and the periopal is attached to here, when it stretches back up, you'll see that periopal stretch like that. Um, so I'll try and find picture. I got a picture of my horse's foot with relatively correct periopal and another foot where this periopal skin is stretched from here to here. And somebody might measure it and think the horse had heels, but the horse really the heel has been trimmed out. And what you're looking at is a distortion and not the true uh, way the back of the foot is to be configured. But anyway. Um, okay, so look at this foot. You see, this is the cartilage on this horse's foot. This is the way the cartilage is supposed to look. It is not supposed to be, uh, let me see here, and I will draw. What you see a lot of is this. You'll see that, okay? Or you'll see, let me see, clear all drawing. That wasn't very good. But since it's cartilage and fat, this here, it can be pulled down like that. See, and then if you, and what happens is the internal heel gets pushed up, this gets pulled down, you wind up with the foot that's shaped kind of like that. See? And so a lot of these horses, what we've been seeing is this whole part of the foot. Um, once you grow in and restore the heel and enlarge the capsule, it releases the cartilage and pulls it back up to where it's supposed to be on the foot itself. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's just got a beautiful feet. The cartilage has never been pulled down under back here, full in here. A lot of times, sometimes you'll see, um, sometimes a horse, uh, what you'll see in this area right here is you will see it'll look real hollow. That's because something else that can happen, just the center of the foot can be pulled under like that too. Here, this is a pretty good picture. Here, this is uh, this is live periopal skin covering just the back of the bulb, which is the back of the coronary band and shouldn't be much wider than the coronary band. And then this is just as the wall grows, the periopal skin sticks to the heel and grows with it. So. I'm just measuring his feet to see kind of how long they were, how wide they were. Such a nice boy, such a nice boy. But anyway, just studying the growth.
Okay, there you can see he's got really nice thick walls. And um, in my other picture, I show that they're about an inch thick there. So, so Tiffany, um, is, is that what you wanted to see or did I go off somewhere? Tiffany had to go. She, she, uh, lunch break was over, I suppose. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, they can watch this. But it'll uh, be on the video. I think she should yeah. see you. will be yeah. able to watch the video. Okay. All right. Well, does anybody else have something they want to share? Riza, well, what have you been doing this week? And how's your racehorse? It's looking good. The horse is looking good. <laughs> um, I haven't, uh, haven't got much to share this week. Um, okay. Just a nice foot one pony that I've been doing for a while. Okay. And uh, I'll just take a picture quickly. I'll send it to you quickly. Okay. That'd be awesome. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we'll do like uh like jeopardy Okay, okay, I'm sending to you now, Linda. Okay. I'm just waiting for this phone to. Oh, there we go. Uh, it will probably be in Messenger. Already. Okay, it will probably get to you soon. Oh, okay. Did you get it? Yep. Okay, I think I, I'll see if I got any more and I'll send it to you as well. Just different views. What kind of horse is this? Um, this is just a little, I think it's a cross, uh, what they call here in South Africa, Burpat, which is like a, a mixed breed of a lot of different <laughs> breeds. Uh -huh. And uh, and I think it's, it's got a bit of saddle in it, American saddle in it, but not much. I don't think much. But it's uh, the pony's about, well, it's not higher than 1.2 meters. I mean, like, I don't know what you call that. And yeah, in, I... inches is probably a bit about, I think, uh, not inches, I mean, hands. I don't think it's bigger than 12 hands. Oh, okay. So it's he's a not a very big feller. No, it's not a very big feller, no. Not at all. Well, let me just see if I can find some more pictures quickly. I must have some more. Okay. Well, it's really nice the way all those horn tubules there. You can really see how those tubules line up. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've, I've noticed as well when I took the pictures. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, here's another one. So the other foot, I think. Let me just see if we can. Where is Okay, here's another one. And that battery is going to die. Should be getting to you soon. Okay. Oh yeah! Wow. Yeah, the, those tubules are really aligned nice. Yeah. How old is I, this horse? Do you know? Well, this fella is about twenty-eight years old, I think. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, he's about. But when I started with him, his feet was really bad, and he uh -huh. had uh, cracks in his toes and stuff. 
Um, I've actually done some videos where I did uh, drill the cracks out and treated it, and the cracks hasn't come back because also the feet has come right, the the heels has come better. Yeah. And the sole is nice and thick. He's got nice thick soles. Um, his frogs are quite quite plumped up, and uh, his bars. I mean, I should have taken pictures from the bottom. I didn't take pictures from the bottom. Um, you know, everything just seems good and robust on this feet. Yeah. I can see why. I mean, just having the horn tubules in alignment, you yeah. know, and good heels yeah. and stuff. Um, well, yeah, just that in and of itself, it's going to make one great big difference, you know, yeah. and stuff. They look really good. Now, this is, is, this, yeah. is this a rear foot? And the other one a front foot or these yeah this the other one this is a front foot this one the okay. other one was the rear the hind foot yeah that's okay. the hind foot okay well looks yeah. really great done a great job yeah no, there hard. here's the thing about here's the thing too about what you do you know and stuff i mean man you work so hard uh by the taking pictures is is like by the time you get to that point, it's like, oh my God, no, <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Got to pack up and go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to pack up and go. Uh, so I can, I can totally relate to that. So I'm really appreciate the pictures that you do get for us because I know what hard work you do. Thanks. And excellent right. work too, by the way. And again? We just want you to know we really appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate I'm speaking it. for everybody, and I know it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So little thing that I've noticed. I mean, I mean, just how that horn tubules aligned nicely now. Yeah, and this the whole is great. Thing, I mean, and even the foot looks to me like it's gone bigger. You know, uh -huh. um, the, the the heel area and stuff like that. It probably has. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, because that would all be a part of the improvement. Otherwise, yeah. your door, because if it hadn't, your your dorsal walls would be as nice and straight. They'd be wanting to push forward and dish out and, yeah, you know, how they do. And you can even look over on that other foot. It's just, you yeah, know, the, the dorsal wall, yeah. Such it's got such a great connection in the dorsal wall. The yeah. quality of the hoof wall is yeah. great. Very important. See? So you know you're getting somewhere when you have that quality of hoof wall. Yeah. You know, and this one, um, um, I think the last time I trimmed him must have been eight weeks or something because this guy only phones me when he, when the one uh, that needs shoes, <laughs> shoes come off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but That's then, funny. I mean, but I mean, this, this, this one has been trimmed back, <clears throat> I'd say about between every, I think every six to eight weeks, uh -huh. this one has been done. Huh. And um, he's doing well. I mean, I yeah. mean, this was about, I think he's about 28 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's quite an old little pony. Yeah. But well, uh, they, they, still, they still go on little light rides with him and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So that's fine. Well, that's great. Well, yeah, they're great looking feet and a great example of horn tubules in alignment gradually getting shorter as they go towards the back of the foot yeah. you know and stuff well thank you for sharing that thank you guys well okay is there anybody that has anything else that they uh want to talk about or horse they want to ask about today or anything okay good <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Hallelujah. Well, really. <laughs> Hallelujah. One, two, three. Wait a minute. What time is it? It's almost four. Two, three, four. So we're going to end it at three hours. <laughs> All right. Well, th thanks for coming. And to everybody out there, um, I hope you have happy trim this week. And may your horses be found. Hey, everybody take care till next week.
Yeah, you too, Linda. Keep well. Thank Everybody you, else, um, have, a, have a great rest of the week. I will. You too. You guys too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Stop share. Oh, thank you, dear.